so okay let me share screen with you uh do you see my screen okay yeah okay then we're going to find the file file will be in study continue okay that's where we were am i so yep we already knew the operational period of principle. I mean, talking about the time period of principle. I think we had stopped at cost principle, which is one right above it. Above? Or, oh, cost principle. Yeah, for, okay. I don't remember if we had read time. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, which one? Which one? Let's look at uh, the outline again. We always wanted to look at these things so we know where okay. we were, right? So we already know the basics to accounting different basic concepts am right so and to method am i of accounting we know the equation and different items on it am i the accounting equation am i making sense to you this yeah one, you know so then related to, to basic um, items on different reports am i for the purpose uh, we're talking about the snapshot we're talking about the flow am i like a dam pouring out the water is a flow, am I? So, mm -hmm. and then you want to measure exactly how much water in the dam, am I? That's a good picture to describe asset, uh, I mean, balance sheet and a cat, uh, and a profit loss, am I? So you understand yeah. my point, you know? So anyway, profit loss eventually measures the increase or decrease of the total volume of the dam, am I? Making sense to you, you know, mm -hmm. so, and, um, in the end of the month, like produce the time, you will have to know how much water in the dam, am I? In a sense, you know, so keep right. that. So that's basically the balance sheet was represent. Making sense to you? You know, mm -hmm. so, okay. Let's move on there. So the equation there is a balance sheet equation. It uh, says equals liability plus ownership equity. Then we talk about the generalization and posting a transaction, am right? We did that, am right? Yeah. Then it's, it's, we use a car, purchase a car, am right? On credit or not without credit, am right? Making sense to you? You know, right. so. Then we in the file right now, we're talking about the different income statements. Um, oh, did it with? Not too sure. We're talking about the different principles now, am right? So we're not ending the file, we still Oh man, this is a. I have a feeling that uh, major elements is referring to those principles, but I could be wrong. Uh, let me see. In which which point? Five uh, point five. Three. We're talking about point major five. elements as discussed uh, and applied in hospitality industry. Hmm. Okay. No, that's income statements. So, anyway, it doesn't matter. We're just going on with the uh, the flow now. Okay. We know where sure. we were, right? We finished that. So, we finished. Um, this way, am I making sense to you? You know, so yeah. Oh, back to the principles. Let's give us a recount of uh, the how many principles. This is really redundant information to me. You know, so sure, uh, it's, it's okay, but if you don't need to worry about those things if you don't remember. Okay, don't beat yourself up. So yeah, so there yeah. are general accepted accounting principles. Let's give a rundown. Okay, again, okay, titles. Monetary unit principle, your business entity principle, you know what that means, am I right? You got to have entity identify, right. am I? You know, it's a solo property, a corporation, a LLC, stuff like that, am I right? So making sense to you, mm -hmm. so the equity part can be identified. Also, with equity, that means ownership, have a claim, am I right? For the benefit from the business that is called stakeholding am right making sense to you you know so yeah just have an obligation to report and also reward for those investment okay all equities making sense to you you know so yeah, yeah. and the ownership involved equity also share responsibility if it's the the, the somebody loaning money to the bit through the business the owner eventually has to pay it back am right that's mm -hmm. To reflect it in the accounting system as well making sense to you you know right. so yeah it's more 
monetary unit principles that is basically currency unit and right so some use silver coins to do accounting some use we call them the tablets and right and this is my point you know so mm -hmm. today we use the digital and right this monitoring but it's right dollar value it's just imaginary not unit am right making sense to you but it mm -hmm. is a unit generated principle uh accepted by the business uh, participators, am I? But transaction, you know, so therefore they use the same unit. You, know, you can't say, okay, to me, dollar means, you know, you can buy tens soda, am I? And this is my point, you know, so yeah. uh, to others say, oh, no, a dollar in to me, you can buy a hundred, you know, we got a problem there. Am I making sense to you? You know, so they have to have some value, say the dollar is generally priced. At this price, making sense to you, you know. Mm -hmm. so, okay, let's move on. Going concern, going concerns, principles that is, uh, think about business ongoing, am I? It's not short lived, am I? Making sense to you, you know. So, right. uh, fixed assets, they have extensive period uh, predicted or eventually will be if. Uh, uh, that prediction is right, am I? Be I, found, I found that particular point interesting because in some yeah. other uh, sort of extracurricular study I've done in accounting uh, oh. in the past week uh, oh. or so, wow. uh, there's, a, there's a mention of uh, how some businesses approach or will approach a business or a business endeavor as actually being something that is short-lived, particularly with investments. So oh, yeah. it kind of seems like this going concern principle Yes. is uh, almost in contrast to that sort of thing where investors yes. they're kind of they're kind of uh insurance is that if when the business does essentially go down they they get their stocks or the things that they invested with sure. returned or sure. something like then, that then you engage that as accounting is investor not as owner of business and right this is all based on the ownership of the business, am right? Basically, exactly. equity. So this is this is honing in yeah. more on like a hospitality business approach to stuff. So yeah, it's any business. It's it's considering you're an investor, you're not the owner, am right? Right. That's my point, you know. So right. if you have an equity, you tied with a business entity, then you have to say that my business is not going to bankrupt tomorrow. Making sense to you? So the mm -hmm. ongoing principle is implied through those things. One thing tied to the other or deduct from another. Making sense to you? You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, thinking about investment. That's good, yeah. Different thinking, so. But definitely that accounting need to be uh, being envisioned uh, based on that the, the, the investment is going to have a, a term. Am I right? Making sense to you? Going to yeah. today. So anyway. Now let's move on, which is continue last time. Cost principle, can you read it for us from there? Yeah. Cost principle, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the assumption made by the monetary concept. Can you read it fast? I'm so sorry, I want you to time sure. percent or oh, 20% faster so we can move on quickly. So, yeah. The assumption made by the monetary concept is tied directly to the cost principle, which requires the value of business transactions be recorded at the actual or equivalent cash cost. During extended periods of inflation or deflation, comparing income statements for different years becomes difficult, if not meaningless, under the stable dollar assumption. However, some exceptions are made with the valuation of inventories for resale and also to express certain balance sheet and income statement items in terms of current rather than historic dollars. Hmm. Good. You know what that means, am I? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go on. Go on. Time period principle. The time period principle requires a business entity to complete an analysis to report financial condition and profitability of its business operation over a specific operating time period. An ongoing business operates continuously. Electrical power in reality flows continuously to the user, yet in theory, the flow stops when the service meter data is recorded. The billing statement records that service for the time period technically ended at a certain date, Although yeah, the service continues without interruption. Yeah, we did. This one, right? So let's move on. Yep. You know, the yeah, it's started with a consistent principle, but it's good to know we have fiscal year, we have calendar year, right? So sometimes uh -huh. it necessarily overlap. Make it sense to you? Sometimes it de yep. dif differentiate. Then conserv conservative principles, that is, you know, depreciation especially is concerned. Am right? I wanted to, uh, to make sure that it's the... I can cover the cost as 
as reasonable as early possible, basically as a conservative, right? So make it right. sense, you know. So, okay, consistency principle. That's where we start. Go ahead. The consistency principle was established to ensure comparability and consistency of the procedures and techniques used in the preparation of financial statements from one accounting period to the next. For example, the cash basis requires that cash be exchanged before sales revenue or expenses can be rec recognized. The accrual basis of accounting requires recognition of revenue when earned and expenses when incurred. Switching back and forth between the two would not be consistent, nor would randomly changing inventory valuation methods anyway, from one period to the next. Move on you know the problem, right? So if you change accounting principles in between time, that accounting reports, whatever, is a mess, am I? It does not be accurate. That was yeah. making sense to you? Let's move on. So, hmm. Materiality concept. Theoretically, items that may affect the decision of a user of financial information are considered important in material and, and that's kind of a weird sentence, and material and must be reported in a correct way. Okay, there's a, here's a in, in direct understanding that if I'm accounting, um, I mean, my reports on balance sheet, I get in the back account ten thousand dollar on the polluted account, am I? So make uh, sense to you. That means I expect to see that ten thousand dollar can withdraw from that back account, account, am I? You know, I can spend it, am I? You know, that's my point. You know, so right. if not a false statement or whatever statements, am I? And that's my point. You know, so that's what material in this light is money in the account. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a say that hey, a fix it as a car, you know, in this department, what well, good that department are should be able to find that car, am I making sense to you? You know, so in fixed sets because at least fixed set can give you value there, am I making sense to you? You know, so right. yeah, well, go on. So the materiality concept allows immaterial small dollar amount items to be treated as an expedient although in in an expedient although incorrect manner hmm. the previous discussion of conservatism an item of restaurant equipment with a five-year life could be fully depreciated in its first year this technique would be considered overly conservative particularly if it has if it has a material effect to operating income hmm. consider the alternatives first equipment costing fifty thousand dollars with no estimated res residual value could be fully depreciated the first year to maximize depreciation expense, thus reducing operating income. Second, the equipment could be systematically depreciated over each year of estimated life to allocate depreciation expense charges against sales revenue in each year of serviceable life. That means this is means different money amount, am I? Material limiting concept. It means how much material I'm gonna use, am I? You know, so. I don't know. Let's go on. Uh, I actually a little confused by the concept here. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Depreciating equipment systematically each year over the life of the asset provides the most realistic alternative. Mm -hmm. This technique recovers the cost of a long-lived physical asset by allocating depreciation expense based on the consumption of the benefits received from the asset over five years of use. On the other hand, a restaurant might have purchased a supply of letterhead station stationary for use over the next five years at a cost of two hundred dollars okay Your what it means is uh we get it am right materiality is basically if it's too much am i right? consider it is a substantial uh stuff am i right? you treat it as a big number am i right? big expenses yeah. you try to apply pretty appreciation if it's too small don't worry about it am i right? it's not materializing means your cost am i right? make it right. sense to you so I think that's what it means, okay? So it doesn't matter really, you know it or not, it doesn't influence too much, okay? Unless um, you, know, you will know what to do, am I? You understand know, my point, you know? So right. let's see another example will come out of our own. If I buy a cast iron, carrot iron can pass on few generations, am I? A cook, fine. Am I being consistent here? You know, so, and um, if, if, you know, but it's only cost $30 or $100. Who cares, my make it sense to you, you know, so, right. and uh, you write it off. But if something that um, is uh, cost you a lot, make it sense to you, you know, so like uh, the ice cream machine, am I, we've got in the restaurant, yeah. that's a different story, am I, make it sense to you, you know, so, yeah. Let's move on. Oh, disclosure. 
Okay. Full disclosure principle. Financial statements are primarily concerned with the past with a past period. The full disclosure principle states that any future event may that may or will occur and that will have a material economic impact on the financial position of the business should be disclosed to probable and potential readers of the statements. Such disclosures are most frequently made by footnotes. Uh, before we read example, I want to see if you, uh, in your mind, you, you can come up with your own examples. Um, let's see. I guess like with uh, grannies, for example, if we were to focus again, as in like the past principles on like a piece of equipment or something that, uh, let's see. If uh, we were to look at like the revenue, the sales revenue for ice creams or something, mm -hmm. and then we knew that during the time of say when the sales revenue was recorded, there was like an accident that took place with the machine mm -hmm. that would potentially affect the sales revenue of the next period, say, mm -hmm. then that, that could potentially be added into the footnotes. I, um, it has to do with uh, an op like an operating. Actually, I'm a little confused with with the events you're talking about, you know. So, so like if mm -hmm. a part yeah. of the ice cream machine was broken and it would it would uh, it that would affect... that is that you can predict and right that's not will occur or may occur. It may occur, but it's not calculable. Am right? You don't know how much you're gonna fix cost you. A breaking down, am I? So making sense to you? So sure. those are not cannot be materialized into accounting. So, but if I promise a store that I got a contract, I first receive a thousand dollar from you. Say I supply a monthly certain amount of ice cream to you, am I? I do, in a sense, monthly I'm gonna give you a hundred of I mean, hundred dollar ice cream. Am making sense to you? You know so. So yeah. my sales, but we see the full contract number that is thousand dollars. Make it into you. That means the next ten months is each month. I need to give you the ice cream, am I? And this is my point to fulfill my obligation. Uh, what what that transaction look like? You know that may happen, right? Or will occur, am I? Because I have to do uh, the consecutive months to. To, to give the people the ice cream, make it sense to you. Okay. <laughs> you know, so. Could there, mm -hmm. then if I was to use uh, a different example, since yeah. I think I have a better understanding now, what if yeah. for the month, uh, for the upcoming month, we had a, a, the, uh, a day or two scheduled for someone to come and fix the ice cream machine, which would make it to where it was uh, basically not to be used on that day. Since that would be a future event that will both will occur and have a potential material economic impact on the machine, would that be recorded as something else like a footnote? No, really, because that means you don't have a real business transaction in terms of sales going on, am right? In terms maybe uh, have a contract with the repairer, the guy who do the repair job, uh -huh. maybe have some cash obligation, right? You know, you need to pay something. You might sign a contract, you know? Pay ahead of time. Yun says my point. That's my uh, to do with. But in terms of ice cream generation sales, and um, that cannot be predicted. Am I? Yun says my point. Or it go with a real cash flow. So, uh, so most times this has to do with uh, um, contractual liabilities or obligations. Making sense to you? You know so. Uh, all privileges. Okay. So making sense to you? You know so like. Why doesn't it mention that then in the like the definition of a full disclosure principle if it does typically have to do with contracts? Yeah, yeah. So you have a contract say that you're gonna have a rent coming this year, right? You, whether you see the rent or not, that coming period, if somebody said I delayed the rent for three months, uh, should you you know delay in this year by the end year, you have three months not receive the real income. Making sense to you, but the rent in terms, the contractual income, uh, is there, right? So you supposed to have income for the last three months. Have your income there, am I? Making sense to you, you know. So, in the accounting system, you say, like, yeah, you have some income. You just didn't receive the real cash. Somebody owe you money. Making sense to you, you know. So, it will translate it as income for you, rent income on one part. 
The other way is, okay, somebody owing money, that's going to be a uh, liability, right? Make it not, not our liability, but the, a loan or whatever, you know? So a claim to others who own you the money, you know, basically called the receivable, okay? So making sense to you, you know, so from your, the one who rent you money. Let's look at their example. My point is I want to inspire you to do uh, engaging and activate reading, so rather than passive reading. And says my point, you know, so yeah, yeah. go ahead. Mm -hmm. For example, read examples, emotional, yes. mm -hmm. what's that? Read examples, so, so yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, a hotel should report the building of a new wing or the future acquisition of another property. A restaurant facing a lawsuit from a customer who was injured by tripping over a frayed carpet edge should disclose the contingency of the lawsuit. Similarly, if accounting, if accounting practices of the current financial statements were changed and differ from those previously reported, the changes should be disclosed. Uh. Okay, it's not it has nothing to do with the real transaction actually. I'm fully misunderstood those things. You know, that's how how little I know about those uh, principal stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is basically some major events, major transactions, major contracts, or thing will influence a whole uh, have a huge impact over the business. Am right? All the accounting. Yeah. Uh, accounting result, if you will, you got to have some footnotes explain what's happening there. Make sense to you, so people read. So, book. using the example of grannies again, we could say that the yeah. some of the stuff that my dad's about to do there at grannies in in adding some new things and maybe yeah. adding a potential window. Yes, yeah, that, that 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 if we put in plan, you know, contract it out, right. that we would disclose am right in a sense. Full disclosure, yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Good point. Yeah. So let's yeah. move on then because we understand what it really means. Am right? So okay. basically, and major information relevant to the business period or projected coming period for transparency uh, reporting purposes. Am right? Use our own word to describe right. that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Objectivity principle. Hmm. This objectivity principle requires a transaction to have a basis in fact. Some form of objective evidence or documentation must exist to support a transaction before it can be entered into the accounting records. Such mm. evidence is the receipt for the payment of a guest check or the acceptance of a credit card or billing a house account that supports earned sales revenue. The accrual basis of accounting recognizes revenue when earned, not necessarily when received. Sales yeah, you revenue can, is. You can move on to the next one now, so because you know what it means, am right? So yeah. Okay. Making sense to you is you need some recording paper trail to back out transaction, am right? Especially you do sales or buy some stuff. So yeah. Is the yeah. second paragraph of any importance? As it mentions stuff like bad. Yeah, debt. There, there's a bad debt stuff like that. Those are uh, interesting details. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. If payment of a receivable become of a receivable becomes uncollectible, it may be written off as bad debt expense, income statement method for income tax purposes. That means there are no paperwork or supply by your business partners, am I right? Oh. You had to produce your own documents, the documents that it, this needs to be right off. Make it sense to you? Mm -hmm. you know, so go ahead. An uncollectible account may also be written off through the creation of an allowance for uncollectible accounts, balance sheet method for financial reporting purposes. The allowance for uncollectible accounts may be established to provide for future bad debts. Oh, we However, do that. We do that with our business people. We commission earners. We normally have a, a average a big number percentage uncollectible. Am I right? So actually, right. you know, we would predict that. That's says my point. You know, consider average out. Said, hey, there might be ten percent is this not unactualized income for us. Am I right? We want to register that as ongoing. Uh, projected a bad debt, basically, you know, so, yeah. so we don't pay taxes on it. Making sense to you, you know, right. so, yeah, go ahead. Mm. However, the creation of an allowance account for bad debts, balance sheet method, is an example of an exception to the objectivity concept. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> go ahead. The allowance account has no absolute basis in fact, because it relates to future events that might or might not occur. However, the allowance account for bad debts is normally based on past historical experience on the percentage, the percentage of the receivable. You know the point, am right? It's called allowance account. Okay, so yeah, so allowance is not uh, okay. Like uh, 
allow you to do something. I just allow is actually allowances that uh, there are there are there are payables not able to be received, right? Or debt not able to be collected, right? Making sense to you? So allowances to do with the obligation to to in a potential learning making sense to you, especially to the uh, to the government who collect your taxes, right? You don't want to pay those things, right? So yeah. Right. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. To the matching principle. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> the matching principle. Are you okay with my way of uh, moving forward? You understand, am I? This is too the much general stuff. It's really is this information making sense to you? But it does yeah. give some basic concept. How counting getting down in general making sense to you? You know so. Yeah, you don't sure. need to dwell too much, but you don't understand what it means, you know, so go ahead. Yeah. The matching principle reinforces the accrual basis of accounting. Assets are consumed to generate sales revenue inflows. Outflows of assets are identified as operating expenses. The matching principle requires that for each accounting period, all sales revenues earned must be recognized whether payment is received or not. It also requires the recognition of all operating expenses incurred, whether paid or not paid during the period. I want you to read the matching principle requires again. Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the matching principle requires that for each accounting period, all sales revenues earned must be recognized whether payment That's is income, received. That's income, right? That's inflow, right? Income, yeah. Right? So you've got to resist all of them. Right? That's my point, you know? So right. else it cannot accurately reflect with your revenue, am I making sense to you? You know, so right. Next, it also requires the recognition of all operating expenses incurred, whether paid or not paid, during the period. That's basically actualizing uh, precisely what the cost during that period. Yeah, am I the total cost? If you don't pay attention to those things, not matching it. The accounting literally is a mess, am I? It does not really reflect your business. Making sense to you? Therefore, required to match it up. Making sense to you? You know, so, yeah. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Let, let me give an example. Somebody uh, purchased certain things in April, okay? So you have revenue actualized. Making sense to you? Yes. You know, so, but the, somebody may say, hey, you know, the, the uh, content or the bookkeepers missing the material, or somebody in the operation didn't report that, make it sense to you? No, so that's my point, you know, but in the back account, you already have a uh, learning, am I? Let's see, $4,000 increase. In the, the day, you're gonna match it up, okay, where's that the $4,000 came from? Even nobody had reported anything to me, making sense to you? But uh, in my back account, I said there's actual $4,000. So it required you as a content then to trace back said, oh, that also don't like came from this guy. Making sense to you is a client of this department and is under this salesperson. Making sense to you had a need to furnish with me the contract or the sales, am I? The information. Making sense to you? You know, so, and uh, then you deal with that, you know. If uh, he said it this, this is one time, it's okay. But if it happened 10 times, that guy need to be reported, am I making sense to you? Say yeah. he don't give me paperwork. But then the four thousand dollar on your bank account require you to treat it as revenue, not as any other source of e increase of cash. Making sense to you? You know, says my right. point. You know, so that's what it means. So I'll give you mm -hmm. an example there. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. As previously discussed, re sales revenue is recognized when earned, and operating expenses are recognized when incurred, regardless of when cash is received or paid. Mm. The matching principle also conforms to the timing of the recognition of sales revenue inflows and expense outflows that allow matching of revenue to expenses for an accounting period. When a profit-directed operation ends its operating period, it seeks to determine the best estimate of operating results, net income or net loss. When total sales revenue is greater than total expenses, net income will exist. When total sales revenue is less than total expenses, a net loss will exist. The financial statement that discloses financial results for an accounting period is the income statement. If all sales revenues earned and operating expenses incurred at the end of an operating period are not recognized, 
the resulting net income or net loss will not provide the most accurate estimate of profit or loss. Mm. If a depreciable asset is disposed of, the total accumulated depreciation charges over its life are deducted from the original cost to find its book value. When a long-lived asset is sold, traded, or otherwise disposed of, the book value of an asset of the asset is matched against the value received, not original historical cost, to determine if a gain or loss is to be recognized at its disposal. Hmm. Do you understand what that means? Very difficult, actually. Yeah. Let's see. Give a living example, okay? So again, cars. I buy a car, I begin to depreciate it based on my yeah. method applied to NMI for fixed asset depreciation. But at the end of the day, the car said, I decide to sell the car. Making making sense to you? Yeah. you know, calculate down the depreciation method. Let's see, have left a value of about $1,000, but you sell it $2,000, am I? So you got $1,000 extra, am I? Making sense to you? You know, so you have to register that as a gain through the sales, more than right off the existing data for the car, but it registers that as income to you, am I? Make yeah. it to you. Hold on a minute, okay? So. I'm just sorry. It's probably what you know, I'm heading out to do with the goat transfer um, oh, at the property. Oh, we don't want to be here, okay? It smells. Yeah, yeah I, I Well, no, okay. the, uh, like, can you trust that goat can be way smellier. I'm a um, I do have one customer who's going to stop by with some DVDs, a whole stack of DVDs. You should recognize her. She's the Thank same you. gal who dropped by before. Okay. I know what that's about. No, I'm going to take care of it. I, that would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you bet, you bet. <clears throat> okay, we're back. So. All right. Back to business. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we um, finished all the principles. Let's do a review of how many of the principles. I give a brief description so we understand. Okay, so. Sure. Okay. Um, why you not start from there? General accepted accounting principles. The first one, business entity, you know that one, right? Yeah. Second yeah, one, yeah. monetary unity, you know that one. Going concern principle, cost principle, time pure principle, conservatism principle, consistency principle. What is consistent principle again? Um, let's see. Accounting method you want to change, am I? So yeah. Oh, it has to do with the method and the approach of kind of yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly. So okay, materiality concept that was a confusing one. What that means? Need the transaction in the in terms its impact, material impact, or the business whether should be registered um, as. Um, what it called uh, called a conservative principle or not am right it says mm -hmm. my point you applied for example it's a five fifty thousand dollar the big number i might can't write it off as a pure cause for the first when it occurred am i if i purchase something make it sense to you right. but it's two hundred dollars it can be considered expense right off in that period am i make it sense to you you know so right. something that nature there for the materiality is a material amount, if you will, the cost or income, in, especially cost impact the business, need to be considered, am right? So $2,000, $200 is so different than $50,000. Am I making sense yeah. to you? You know, so yeah. Go ahead. The next one is the full disclosure principle. We know that it's nothing to do with data, but noting, am right? Noting the major changes of plans and uh, can impact the, the the state of the business, making sense to you? Right. You know, so, yeah. Objective principle, that has to do with reporting, am I? To whom you're reporting, am I? Making sense to you? You know, so, yeah. Uh, for disclosure to the stockholder, it might be to the different standard applied to inner management or upper management, making sense to you? You know, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, objective principle, you know what I mean? Okay, that is, you want to be object with the earning potentials, am right? So stuff like that, you know, so especially there are the bad debts, then you want to create an allowance account to give us some allowance too for that the possibility, am right? Based on historical data, percentage can be 
ascertained for that allowance. Am I making sense to you? So yeah, matching principle. I'm so sorry, my English when reading this kind of material uh, materials become a little bit uh, formal. Okay, so and okay. Uh, might be not that right. So ask me questions. Okay, so <laughs> okay, matching principle. You know what that means? Uh, match each other, right? Especially in a period of time. Income and the cost need to be matched up, am I for that period, yeah. so that data can be accurately reported uh, in there. And then we go to example about the book value and the real sales value in end in the end of a fixed sets, making sense after after depreciation period, making sense to you? You know, so right. yeah. Okay, let's go on with the next next big uh, big item. They call the the ledger count the debit credit card function. Well, that's interesting one. Okay, you go ahead. This is a begin to getting the middle gradients of counting. Okay, bookkeeping. So this okay, okay. we must slow down here to get it right. Okay, so yeah, sure. go ahead. Thank you. The ledger account in a manual accounting system, the general ledger maintains separate accounts for each type of accounting transaction. These accounts are identified by name and account number using a standardized format. Ledger accounts are necessary to record transactions on all items reported on the financial statements. The ledger account records each dollar value posted and reports the account balance after each entry is posted. The, the journal entry is the source of instructions that identifies a specific account by name, the dollar value, and the debit or credit column to be entered. The effect of the debit or credit entry will increase or decrease the balance of the account posted, depending on whether the normal balance is a debit or credit balance account. A ledger account page generally uses the following format. Wow, do you understand what you're saying? What's that? Do you understand what you're saying? Somewhat, yeah. Okay, tell me then. Well, <laughs> nah. I basically would be reading it again <laughs> because this is all kind of new to me. I, you I'm need still... to, okay. So we have a ledger, am I? That's a ledger, okay? This is what I call a ledger. Remember that? Okay, a ledger. Yeah. So, um, I think we, anyway, you can read this. Just a way of recording transactions, I think. Yeah, and... this this interesting is because this is inherited from when you do handwriting, okay? Uh, you know, ledger is literally a book, am I? You know, not necessarily um let's see uh it, it reflected in software making yeah, sense yeah. to you you know on, on computer but you have to actually sometimes have books okay we used to do hand writing making sense to you so right, what right. we do is have a different ledgers for different accounts okay so making sense to you or different sessions for different accounts in one big ledger book making sense to you you know so Accounts, for example, okay, this is cash. Then you're going to do the recording with a transaction incurred under that account, am I? Classify that account. Making sense to you? That's right. a ledger. Okay, if that fixed sets, that's going to be another way, am I? Then you have account number for it. And you normally, you want to do account number, uh, for example, 00000021000 is uh that's a lot am right you understand me yeah. or tens of them who knows am right you know says my point you know so that is assets side okay make it sense to you you know so then at two thousand to thirty thousand that is uh, liability side make it sense to you forty thousand on that is owner equity size if you understand my point. So you, when you look at the number, you just started, okay, less than 10,000. That's all on the balance sheet in the sense they all belong to asset side. Making sense to you? You know, so, oh, it's a liability side, that's gonna be 2,000 to 30, am I? Over 40, oh, that's all equity account. You quickly can identify for the accounting number to know which uh, section will be uh, that account in the balance sheets. Making sense to you? You know, yeah. so so that's why the number system or archive system, whatever you call it, is so important in accounting, okay? 
And so that's my point, you know. So we're just talking about the count name here. I'll introduce something. If you're confused, let me know. Okay, so but what if the paperwork has to be transacted? You know, so that's my point. In the during the day, you you have many transactions, am right? Making sense to you? Automatically these days those things are generated by machines or computers, am right? Software. Making sense to you? In the old days, you had to use a hand. Making sense to you? You know, so so you have to assign a number to it, ha using manually, so that in very important to line up the number system so you don't get confused. In the end of the day, you will say, okay, I'm missing a, a receipt here because, hey, I suddenly jumped from uh, 1,000 to 1,002 now, am I right? You know, that's my words, 1,001. And you will recognize, oh, no way, we didn't either, we assigned the wrong number, Oh, we really missing a real receipt, am I making sense to you? You know, mm -hmm. so so that's how you get in tracking things. The that called archiving of receipts, and that number going to accordingly enter into the this ledger called explanation, am I? You want to note that the number receipt, so you can always come back to the real receipts. In these days, that uh, you don't need the paperwork anymore, you don't need to store it away anymore. In the old days, don't have machines or PDFs, right? You can't digitize things. So they all store in a storage place called the archive place, right? Making sense to you? Yeah. You know, so in order to, if somebody going to do audition, you're going to have to find that paper, you know, in order to look at the session, what happened, who's responsible, stuff like that. You have that number to trace the real paper. And through the real paper, you trace the one who did the, the transaction, am I? Who would respond right. for the business activity? Make it sense to you, you know, so so you can do business management. Now, move on there. There are another, we're talking about archive now, you know, archive, everything you need to do is so which year, which year, which month, even which day, am I? You know, identified. But in the archive system, not the ledger system, you all need to identify mostly archive system is based on dates, am I right? The progress is right. months, 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 months. But if uh, there are too many paperwork going on, you still need to say, okay, this is all the session for this account. That is the sales, am I right? Making sense to you? This is for expenses, you know, stuff like that. Making sense to you? You also yeah. found the different session within the month for things to be identified. And all those things will be, if needed, is registered or planned uh, through the accounting system. This information useful for you to tracing, and I do the tracing of paperwork and transaction, okay? In the beginning, everybody can have fresh memory, you know, the people around are still doing the business with you, uh, or in time with you can know. But uh, five years later or three years later, the people is not there anymore, am I? They move away from the position, or the business changed, or certain things happened. You know, my but even different people do the whole accounting work, am I? Making sense to you, you know? So, so how you identify those things, uh, you have to think about, there must be a system that objectively and, uh, and orderly uh, put in place so that those things changes the personnel uh, and the change of time, stuff like that, uh, longevity time will not impact the tracing, the re recollection of those informations. Am I making sense to you? You know, so yeah, it's a through this number system. Now, when you're, the, you're a newcomer for accounting, you will find those who uh, said, what are you using for? This is so tedious, am I right? You know, says my point, you know, so, why so had to remember this? Why had to resist those numbers? You know, why had to be accurate about those things? Until you are auditor, few years later come around, want to do the audit work, am I? So in a sense, my point, you know, so I just want to tell you, there might be reasons for certain number system, uh, certain uh, information input system to put in place for this world purpose, okay? I'm making sense to you, so yeah. You in a small business, don't worry about it too much. But if a complex business, and uh, you know, so you going to build a convention, so making sense to you? You know, somebody going to design those conventions. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Next one. <clears throat> okay, let's see. A modified T account is a simple format used to aid in understanding <clears throat> account posting. This format shows a continuous balance that eliminates the need to total the debt, the debit and credit columns to find the correct balance of an account. Mm -hmm. The same principle of posting dollar amounts to the left or debit column, to the left or debit column in the right. Sorry, let me restart that sentence. The same principle of posting dollar amounts to the left or debit column in the right or credit column applies when a manual or computerized system is being used. A modified T format shows the key elements of a ledger account. The use of this format is more than adequate for academic understanding. So that's when last time I showed you a journal entry, right? The debit side, credit right. side. Okay, in the end, all transactions this ledger goes on, on the right side, left side, am I? You debit, yeah. credit, am I? So there is a balance carry on, am I? So if one a journal entry, you will give the balance at the end that will import this account number, am I? Because yeah. a journal entry is a subtract, uh, subsequent, am I? But they will reflect in these things eventually yield the balance, am I? Imagine, right. okay? Make it sense to you. Now, let's just think about if you do cash flow, okay? Cash flow, just pure account, back account, okay? Cash flow. Okay, I have a thousand dollars start with, and then the da da half and around either side. I, each time I have maybe want to give a balance to it, but normally you don't do that at the end of the day or end of the month. Am I making sense to you? You know, so you give a balance, am I? Which is the initial number here, then the total, total am I? Debit or credit, uh, the difference will be ended there. And mm -hmm. Then you're the new balance there, making sense to you? You know, so this will be imported as an item into the balance sheet, am I? Making sense in the total there, and total liability or total uh, assets. Yun says my point, you know, so yeah. to enter that equation. If something missing, the balance sheet will offer balance. Making sense to you? Right. You know, so, yeah. So you have to make sure all the data to be, because when you have a debit, you're always going to either uh, you always have credit, am I? You know, so you have a match. If you don't match, even sense difference will throw the whole balance sheet uh, in balance. Making sense to you? You know, so yeah. Okay, so those are teacher thing at the beginning for newcomers accounting. Where do you understand why people pick on you? Why you miss that sense? Why you miss a number? Making sense to you? You know, so if you're a manager, however, you want the, your the workers work on the data entry, especially all those. Uh, had only those informations, be extremely careful and accurate with their their data entry, am I? Or the managers. Right. Yeah. You know, you are a young man, you're not entering business world yet. If I require those things, you will think, why? 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 Am I all the time? Am I? So yeah. the leaders as well to tell you there's a reason those things are put in place. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. the rules of debit credit functions and their effect on income statement accounts. Sales revenue accounts are credit balanced accounts. Credits increase a credit balanced account and debits in decrease a credit balanced account. Expense accounts are debit balanced. Debits increase a debit balanced account and credits decrease a debit balanced account. The debit credit rules for income statement accounts are summarized below. Is that making sense to you? It, it, it see that on different side of the equation, right? Making sense to you? Yeah, of course, yeah. Th therefore, credit debit means different thing for a particular item in that equation. In, in, in sense of my point, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, in through math, am I? So, let's see, I have an A equals L plus O E, am I? Making sense to you? A e increase of A uh, will be credit, let's see, uh, increases debit, okay? So, but if I increase L, is that gonna be credit or, or, or debit? Credit. It has to be credit, am I? Because it's it's a, it's a amount to this guy deducted, am I? If I consider this increase debit, it's like credit on this one, am I making sense to you? This right. credit to this one is a 
is debit this one making sense to you you know credit root uh to i mean credit this way is a, is a debit to this one equivalent am right making sense yeah. to debit to this one is a credit to this one making sense to you because the see on different side of the equation so making right, sense yeah. to you, you know so yeah okay go ahead mm -hmm. so this is very confusing for the newcomers okay debit credit it's not supposed to be the same thing actually different right when you use the account yeah. Is on different sides, am I? As equations, you got to know which exact account is an assets count or liability account you are dealing with. Okay, so making sense to you, you know. So yeah. right. Okay, next one. You understand, am I? You understand why I'm saying this to you. So yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. The journal and journal entry. Mm -hmm. A journal includes all accounting transactions and is considered the historical no, no. record. Have you read this one yet? Did we do that? Huh? Rules of a debit credit function. Yeah, that's the one I just read. Oh, yeah. oh you just read. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you got it basically. All right. So now the next one I'm going to reserve for like next time. Okay. So. Okay. It's pretty much around the time. So. Sounds good. Okay, let's remember this. Is a uh, notation. That's not it. Sorry, trying to find the the notation. Good. We're gonna pick up next time on this one. Okay, so. All right. Uh, and I'm gonna stop.